So my topic of presentation is approach to pathological fracture. That will be first presentation, followed by recent advances in orthopedic oncology. So if a patient comes to us in our OPD, and this is the scenario where the patient is having fracture of the humerus, what should be done? So if we read this X-ray or see this X-ray, there is region involving whole of the humerus with a pathological fracture. So that is one thing what we can see. We go to second case, again a kid with pathological fracture and classical fallen leaf sign. So two X-rays we have seen and what should be done next for them? So the diagnosis is benign or malignant, it depends on your clinical approach and what is the treatment plan. So we come with the famous movie, who is the hero and who is the villain, we really don't know. So we go to a scenario where a patient was there. So 63 years gentleman with pathological fracture of the humerus. So this was the fracture. Whether it's benign or malignant, we need to assess it. So the orthopedic surgeon thought it is benign. He opened it, soft tissue mass was seen, and external fixator was applied. And patient presented with a wrist drop to us. So this was a clinical presentation, how the patient presented. And on presentation, this patient had lung meds, pulmonary metastasis. So it was a case of osteosarcoma, pathological fracture humerus, which was treated with an external fixator. So we get routinely cases where there is pathological fracture fixed with a nail or a plate and the diagnosis is osteosarcoma or Ewing sarcoma. So that should be prevented because you need to have a proper approach to any x-ray and then treat the patient. So we go to clinical scenario, a patient with swelling over the wrist. This was the x-ray and if we want to read an x-ray very properly, there should be a proper systematic method to read any x-ray in our physical clinical practice. So we developed our method that is A to Z RAM. A is for age of the patient, B is for the bone, bone, which part of the bone, C is for the content, D is for the distribution, E is for exterior of the bone, periosteal reaction, soft tissue mass, F is for the fracture, Z is for zone of transition. So any x-ray you can read in this easy pattern and you don't miss the things. So we thought that we'll publish this A to Z RAM. We published in radiography journal and title is as A to Z RAM in 2021. So this is a subjective method for reading a X-ray. So if you read this X-ray, it's a skeletally mature lesion involving the radius, epiphysis, metaphysis, which is lytic, expansile, well-defined, narrow zone of transition, no periosteal reaction, no significant soft tissue. So most probably it's a benign bone tumor based on the radiology. So if we read any x-ray and see any patient, it's a pathological fracture, we need to assess whether it's a primary or metastatic. If it's primary, we need to investigate it very properly, get an MRI done, get a PET scan done, investigate the patient very properly, and then only do fixation. Pathological fracture is never an emergency. So that is the take home message of this presentation. Pathological fracture is never an emergency. You need to evaluate the patient very systematically with all these steps. So we can see that the tumors common in pediatric age group are which tumors, middle age group are which tumors and elderly which common. So more than 60, it's more commonly a metastatic bone tumor. Still we see primary bone tumors in more than 60 age groups. So important on radiology is we need to know the borders and zone of transitions. So this is important how we draw India's borders with a pen and pencil. Here there is a border between India and Sri Lanka on the sea. Here India and Pakistan on sea. Here there is a land border between India and Nepal. So the land border is very well defined. The sea borders are very ill defined. So border between India and Pakistan, Vaga and Atari. This is benign, malignant, very well defined borders. India, Pakistan or India, Sri Lanka border, very ill defined. So this can be malignant and this can be benign most probably based on our findings. So well defined tumor, it's sharply outlined, sclerotic borders. Majority of the tumors are benign. If it's ill-defined, most probably it's a metastatic or a malignant bone tumor. So easy to understand, easy to remember. We go to two scenarios. A benign bone tumor, you can draw with a pen or pencil. It's a very sharply outlined border. So it's a well-defined tumor. 
it go to a case where it's ill defined it's a most only a malignant bone tumor the next is the content whether it is osteoblastic or which type of content that is very important so we summarize all the things a to z ram a is for age of the patient b is for the bone c is content d is distribution e is exterior f is fracture z is for zone of transition so after this we devised a subjective method this was a subjective we devised a objective method we use a scoring system if the score is less than 3 it's benign tumor score more than 3 it's a malignant tumor so lastly biopsy is very important thing so we have got our own patent for a biopsy device so it's a bone marrow and bone marrow biopsy device which has multiple sensors and this is the device for which we have got patent in march and this is how it functions so it's a biopsy device this is the tumor and you can preset the distance at few millimeters or few centimeters and it stops automatically at opposite cortex so now we are using jamshedi needle this can be a advanced needle which can be useful for a biopsy purpose so this is the device uh, prototype which we have made and we are making a smaller prototype and final product of this device so lastly the patient should be very strong and limb without limbs upper limb or lower limb still the person can function so next part of the talk is something new that is use of 3d printing and augmented reality and virtual reality so use of 3d printing so we can print any bone any muscle so here we are printed talus so this is the institute where i work it's a government cancer hospital and one of the biggest cancer hospitals across the globe so in past we had amputation multiple treatment options so what is 3d printing so like the insect makes a cocoon around itself so you can put a plastic powder or a metal powder into a 3d printer and it will print the object what you want to device or used so this is a simple thing that how a 3d printer works so this is simply example of a 3d printer machine how it works so we'll go by few examples so use of a 3d printer model for orthopedic oncology case where there is a defect involving the shaft of the femur you want to cut the bone from here upper part here from lower part so you can use a jig so this is a customized jig to cut the bone precisely and perfectly otherwise you have to use navigation system which is available at very well less centers across the globe so you can explain the patients and relative what steps you want to perform before surgery use this jig apply on the bone model practice all the steps before doing surgery and intraoperatively it will be very easy to cut the bone perfectly so the distal part of the bone is cut here so next is use of 3d printed scapula what we are using regularly 3d printed plate and 3d printed model so this is how you print the bone model for any pelvis case any pelvis fracture this can be again a easy method complex pelvis structure you can put all the parts plates assemble and pre operatively you can contour it on the patients so we have made a 3d printed model so this is the tumor so this is a 3d printed model again you want to cut the bone from here and here remove this whole bone so this is type 2 plus 3 ma pelvectomy so here the bone model is there artery vein nerves and this is the acetabulum what we resected for this patient so you can check what parts you have removed before surgery intraoperatively it can be again precise and perfect so this is the tumor which was removed and these are the artery veins and nerves so we use this to take cuts into the pelvic surgery ma pelvectomy surgery so one uses use of a model next we go to jigs and then next we have prepared final bone implants this is the femoral head we we'll later on attach this femoral head to the shaft other parts with a mesh or you can print a 3d printed implant for these cases so next is use of a 3d printed plate 
After model, we can print a plate. So these are the bone models which are printed. And this is the customized plate which what we printed. It's a titanium plate. We can fit it precisely and perfectly without contouring. So that is the advantage of this technology. No contouring is required. So we can appreciate here the plate is very perfectly sitting here. It has few holes. So you can customize the holes so that less chances of breakage of this plate. It sits perfectly and precisely. So these are the holes which are made according to your designs that can be made for the patient. We apply a derotation plate anteriorly. So this is the bone which was treated with liquid nitrogen. Put it back again. Slide the plate. Just no contouring required. Very easy. Otherwise you have to do lots of jugglery in the OT. So just slide the plate inside. Fix the screws. So you can use a 3D printed customized plate. This was interoperative function. So next is 3D printer scapula, what we are using nowadays for last few years. So you can print the scapula, you can print the humerus. So case of weaving sarcoma of scapula, where the scapula was removed and we had placed a 3D printed scapula for this patient. So this is the incision, remove the biopsy scar. This is the pre-operative planning, how you make it. So again, you can explain the patient and relatives what things you are planning. This is the printed model. And this is scapula what we are resecting here. So this is the tumor. And we can appreciate this is 20% smaller as compared to this. So you have to make your own planning very properly that the final scapula is 20% smaller as compared to this scapula. Then only there can be a good closure. So put the scapula again here. Fix with the humeral head with the help of a mesh. The patient gets at least 30 to 40 degree abduction movement with this technique. Without any scapula, there will be zero abduction for these patients. So make hole into the clavicle, fix with acromio clavicular joint here, and it's quite stable. Fix it with the chest wall here, with fiber wires and fiber tapes. Next, we see 3D printed talus. So tumor involving the talus, we have removed the talus here. We have printed the talus, and this is intraoperatively, it sits beautifully. There is no muscle attachment over the talus. So it sits perfectly and precisely. So we have developed multiple designs of talus also, where TBL surface was resected and the calcarium surface was resected. And these patients have excellent function. This was the follow-up of the patient. Lastly, in routine orthopedic practice, this can be used. So it was a case of pediatric orthopedics done by our friend, Dr. Kamlesh Dev Murari. So you want to plan the cuts here. So make the model of the femur. Previously, DHS was placed here. So the surgeon wanted to remove the DHS, take a one cut here, second cut here, third cut here. So again, all the steps are performed pre-operatively. Make a jig for the surgeon so that he can cut one part, second part, and third part. So osteotomies can be performed. This is the jig what was made for the surgeon. This is how the jig was placed. So intraoperatively, the surgical time was very much reduced. So one cut, second cut, and he placed the DHS very perfectly and precisely. So you can take all these steps to make your surgery precise and perfect. So this was the final outcome, how he had done it. So, and lastly, we'd like to show what is virtual reality. So this is how virtual reality works. So there is a ocular specs is there, what we can use. So it can be easy training module for your surgeons and residents. So these are the specs what we use. So it is by oculus, meta. So you can wear it and there is remote. So you can control all the steps here. How So intraoperatively, this is, we are doing hemipelvectomy surgery for the patient. So these are our two hands. With the help of joysticks and remote, we control all the steps. So that preoperatively, you can show to your residents, and it can be a good training module. 
so virtually you are doing all the surgical steps with the help of the specs and the remote controls so remove the tumor take the saw to take all the cuts and remove the jig do reaming put the final implant which is a 3d printed implant again and your all steps are performed and lastly a video of virtual reality surgery for biopsy so this is virtual reality biopsy surgery so how we perform it so there are 8 to 9 steps of a bone biopsy recent advances after virtual reality we are trying to use our own softwares on augmented reality so if next time in this conference we can have a workshop on 3d printing so that we can have all the steps how 3d printing is performed in house you can see it and a virtual reality workshop we can have so thank you very much sir.